working on a large Stuart model steam plant. This is part 10 and it's about fitting the new water gauge. And the first thing to do is remove the drain cock from the bottom of it. The idea being to fit the fitting into the boiler first and then refit the drain cock because I can't rotate the fitting whilst the drain cock's in place. No sooner did I screw the drain cock into the bottom of the fitting once it was in the boiler to make sure that the drain cock would fit into the fitting after it had been fitted to the boiler. There's a lot of fitting in this one. The original water gauge, which I've just removed from the boiler and I showed that in the last episode, along with the Stuart safety valve, are going in a plastic bag. And if ever I decide to sell this steam plant, I would provide the original fittings. I much prefer the design and construction of this water gauge than the original one. It's in the same design as the older type of Stuart water gauges. But the originals were castings. This is built up. But the good thing is this water gauge has the inspection plugs. And these are very useful for unblocking the waterways should they get blocked up with lime scale over a period. If the fitting gets blocked, all you have to do is remove the plug and unblock the fitting using something like a very small drill bit. Here in one clip is the problem with water gauges. They need to line up with each other and this is quite difficult. Since new the boiler was fitted with these o-rings and I don't like them at all, look how perish they are and they allow movement on the ends of the water gauges. These are going straight in the bin. The way to do it is to use shim washers, copper shim washers. You can buy them from Blackgates Engineering in small packs of different thicknesses. You could also use crushable copper washers but I don't like those, I prefer this type of arrangement. Once the water gauge top and bottom fittings are in place in the respective bushes at exactly the right angle to each other then the glass will just slide down into the bottom fitting without putting any stress on it. As you can see there's some play all the way around the glass. Don't forget when the boiler gets hot the fittings move around so if the glass was really tight in these fittings as soon as the boiler got warm it would probably crack the glass and that would be the end of it. This could be potentially dangerous. Over the years I have had gauge glasses break, with the accompaniment of lots of boiling water and steam issuing forth from the broken glass. This however is very serious on a coal fired boiler, because all the water runs out of the boiler all of a sudden. This can result in damage to the boiler by overheating, because a coal fire is very hot. All you can do is very quickly dump the fire, drop the fire out of the bottom of the engine. Using a hose pipe through the fire hole door to extinguish the fire is also not recommended because a sudden thermal shock to the boiler and contraction thereof could damage it. With this boiler which is gas fired all I would have to do is turn the gas off but there would still be boiling water and steam everywhere not to mention pieces of broken glass which you could cut yourself on. In this clip I'm making the final adjustment. I've applied the Loctite 542 to hold everything in place and seal the joint. I need to make sure that the bottom fitting lines up with the top fitting perfectly. And if you are fitting a water gauge, take your time with this part of the job. Get it right first time and there can be no problems whatsoever. It's very important to remember that Loctite 542 and other Loctite products can remove paint. So here I'm removing every trace of the Loctite using a cloth. The next part of the job is very, very important. Cutting the glass to the correct length. If the glass is too long, then it will cover the hole into the boiler and the gauge won't work. I need to cut this piece of water gauge glass to two and seven eighths of an inch in length. And for that I'm using this tool that I bought off eBay. This doesn't saw its way through the glass, it just scribes a line all the way around the glass. And once you've done that, all you need to do is snap the tube. The black mark is where I marked it with a felt tip pen. The glass breaks very cleanly, but the edges are a little bit sharp, so I'm using some wet or dry sandpaper to get rid of the sharpness. Here's a piece of glass fitted in position, and this is the correct length. All I need to do now is find some silicone rubber o-rings. I found one exactly the right size for the gas inlet nozzle, because that one had been lost. And what's that got to do with the water gauge? Nothing at all. The ones on the bench at the moment are the ones I'm going to use, but I want to show one or two alternatives. This is a piece of silicone rubber tubing, and you could cut a couple of pieces off this to make your own o-rings. You can buy silicone rubber tubing in various thicknesses, internal and outside diameter, but I'm going to use these. The two o-rings fit the glass perfectly, and they also go inside the nuts. I'm pushing the first o-ring into place using the edge of the piece of glass. Here's another piece of silicone rubber tubing, this is model aircraft fuel tubing, 
and this is OK for smaller water gauges. You see now why I removed the sharp edges of the glass, because I have to push the glass through with my left hand, and I don't want the glass to cut the silicone rubber o-ring that's inside the nut. A lubricant is a good idea at this stage inside the nut, and I just used a drop of saliva, but I didn't show that because it wasn't a pretty sight. With the nut and o-ring firmly on the glass tube and attached to the top fitting, I've applied some saliva to the bottom fitting, and it's time to put that in place, although this one needs to go on the fitting first. Well, I suppose it doesn't. Sometimes I do it halfway up the tube, but in this case, I did it in the bottom. That didn't sound too good. I'd better rephrase it. This time I fitted the glass tube into the o-ring inside the nut whilst it was fastened to the lower fitting. It is most important not to over tighten these nuts. Finger tight should normally be okay. I'll just give the nut a very gentle nip with the spanner. Do not over tighten the nut. If you do, then when the boiler's in steam the glass will probably crack. Finger tight is the order of the day. The best thing to do is do it finger tight to start with. Fill the boiler with water, start to raise steam, and before you get any pressure, you will soon see whether the water gauge is watertight or not. It's not a good idea to adjust the water gauge when the boiler is in steam anyway, or at least with lots of pressure inside it. But it's one of those things, sometimes you find yourself having to do that. The final part of this job is to refit the blowdown cock at the bottom of the water gauge, and I just hope this one doesn't leak. As usual, I apply a very small amount of Loctite 542, and then fit the blowdown cock into the lower fitting. I really could have voiced over that part very badly, but thankfully I didn't. I'm looking forward to a very boring day inputting the details of all my receipts for the last tax year into a computer spreadsheet. Always late as usual, they have to be in by the 31st of January. No time to go into the workshop today then. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.